Hello, hello, lovely people. This is Coach Lucretia, and I want to welcome you back to my YouTube channel. Um, today's video, we're going to talk about um, more along the lines of um, staying grounded as you're seeking spiritually and all that. Last video, I told you guys that I would let you know what my son was buying. This is my, say hello to my baby. This is my new talisman necklace. My son bought it for me. It has the scorpion on there, you know. And of course, I am a Scorpio who, proud Scorpio who loves being who I am. But anyway, this is a beautiful piece. And I um, took some time to charge it with my intentions, to anoint it, um, to let it bake on my altar. <laughs> so anyway, that's that. Um, one day I'll probably go into how to make talisman and amulets, but not today. Okay, so today... I want to talk to you guys really quickly, if I can, a little bit about being grounded. Um, and I made some notes because I don't want to forget uh, some of the more important things that I want to really uh, discuss. But it's about being grounded while you're spiritually seeking. See, I want to. One of the things about organized religion is, of course, it's organized. You know, um, you you come in feeling like you have your priest, your pope your bishops or your pastors or your ministers, your elders, whoever, you know, in almost any other organized religion, there's always some go-to person. And generally we end up with people that we trust. So we, we end up joining the church because we trust the pastor or whatever. Okay. Or, or at least for some people. So, but when you come outside of organized religion and you're trying to keep your spirituality, um, as priority in your life and you're seeking to grow and to ascend to elevate um you're striving toward enlightenment oftentimes you can feel quite alone and even though there are millions of people who's on this same journey as you everybody has their own unique spin to this thing you have some who you know go complete pagan go wiccan go more along the lines of a Buddhist type of belief, but they, they, they're not necessarily practicing uh, Buddhist. Um, I mean, you know, they're, they're all over the place. It's almost an eclectic blend of all kind of beliefs merged in together. So when you're seeking, you find that you have all this room to define your own spirituality, which can be scary because most of us, if we're honest, one of the reasons why we ever ran to organize was religion was because we felt the need to be taught how we're supposed to live this life in the most beneficial way possible without possibly burning and dying and burning and going to hell, you know? <laughs> so, um, so when it comes to defining your spirituality, it can be really scary and it requires a lot of self uh, love and patience and honor, um, self honor. It requires you to really be in tune with yourself, you know, um, to trust yourself. And most of us don't. And mainline religion teach us not to, you know, they teach us don't trust your heart. It's wicked. Don't trust yourself, your flesh, your faulty. You're going to fail. And it make us seek completely outside of ourselves, which is almost always going to be a mistake. So anyway, so when you when you come into all of this, you have so many different things uh, vying for your attention. You have people who want to teach you all these conspiracy theories. You got people who are, approach it strictly from a health perspective and they want to deal with you on your diet and that kind of thing. You have people who approach, you know, the mind body uh, connection in a balanced way. Um, and so there are so many things, you know, should I be a vegan? Shouldn't I? You know, am I going to go to hell for eating meat or am I not? You know, well, do I need to uh, fast more now or fast less now? What am I required to do? Somebody give me a, a guideline. And the thing that you're required to do is keep an open mind, question everything, seek uh, your knowledge, whatever knowledge you find out there, seek the, the companion to it inside of yourself. Like it should be a meeting 
of what you're hearing to what's in you. If it don't do this, then you need to put it on the back. Not completely dismiss it, but put it on the back burner for another time, another place, or whatever. Because everything is not for you, and some things are just not for you right now, but if at some point in time, you can come back to it. Now, when it concerns staying grounded, meditation is so important. Prayer, so important. Now, a lot of people think that once you step outside of the main mainstream religions, prayer becomes kind of unnecessary because who am I praying to? Well, I do believe 100% and I can only speak for myself that there is God. God is there that, and, and I use the term God loosely because that's the term that we've come to uh, agree upon as the highest power being God. Um, but I do believe that we are the design of an intelligent creator. You know, it wasn't an accident. It wasn't just the forces of nature coming together like haphazardly. Yes, we have some forces of nature that came together, but it came together in an organized fashion under the guidance of a higher being that's intelligent. Now, so from that perspective, you don't have to stop praying just because you stop believing in Jesus or Muhammad or who all the, whoever it is you've stepped away from. You don't have to stop praying just because of that. You can continue on with your life of devotion because ultimately, if you believe that there you have a higher power, that you were created, you are a created being, then you can continue to to uh, converse with the creator of all things. So you want to keep your prayer life active. You want to keep meditation central. You want to make meditation a part of your daily life. No different than taking a bath, brushing your teeth, combing your hair. Meditation needs to go on or eating or drinking or going to work, you need to include meditation. I like it's optional, but like it's just as mandatory, just as necessary as all those other things. Why? Because how can you know what's in you and what's for you if you don't know you? And meditation is a way of being introduced to yourself. It's almost like, and I'm just going to speak from, from my own experience and how I define it. It's almost as if meditation is a meeting of your oversoul and the avatar. So the avatar has an option, has has the, the ability to be uploaded and downloaded into so that there's a communication. It's like uh, no different than if I left a camera recording all day long or all night long at my place of business or at my home. At some point in time, it doesn't do me no good to have it on camera if I never go see what's on the camera, right? So at some point in time, we can commune where I go and view video. You know, and now I see everything that the camera saw and and the camera to a degree is being uploaded into me. So um, it's, it's no different than that. So you have the opportunity to converse with your oversoul who is not bound by time and space, who is not bound to just this reality, who can offer guidance. Now, uh, I had this interesting thought one day during meditation, because in the church circle, you know, we used to seek to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And some people will testify that they have had an experience where their body felt as if it was set on fire by something and that things were being burned away from them and that there was this uh, tremendous amount of joy and this, that, and other, you know, being filled or baptized in the Holy Ghost. Well, this is my theory on that. I believe that that same experience is no different than experiences that people have in a lot of other religions because what that experience is is when you actually welcome your your um your guardian angel or if you will or your uh, spirit guide if you prefer to have a more active role in your life to come in and be one with you so that you guys can take this whole thing on together so it's really a big topic guys because there's so much um out there that can hang you up you know, um, as with anything, nothing is perfect, but everything is perfect. You know what I'm saying? In the sense that everything is exactly what it should be, but nothing is so perfect that we need nothing but that one thing. A different way to look at that is this. Christianity serves a purpose. And while it's not perfect, it is perfectly what it needs to be it doesn't need to be perfect or other people or people would not grow beyond it at all or you could say the same thing about uh the islamic faith the uh any other abrahamic religions any religion period okay so um 
when you're out here, you know, be careful about spending a lot of money. That's that's another thing. Stay grounded, period. Because I will tell you guys this. It ain't no different than in church. I know I used to go to so many revivals. And I would have PC people saying, you know, God said it's 12 of y'all in here that's going to give $1,000 tonight. And blah, blah, blah. You come get in this line and God fins to alleviate all your debt and blah, 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 blah. And some of y'all about to have checks in the mail tomorrow. You got going to have this and going to have that. And to see how people would just get so excited. They try to find a thousand dollars. They looking at other people like, give me a couple hundred. They go get together and put so somebody could go stand up in that line. And, you know, it's sad because that's just that's game. It's game. It's a hustle, okay? It's a hustle in the church. It's a hustle in any faith. And it's definitely a hustle in non-organized uh, spirituality, in the New Age movement, in whatever. You know, sometimes they want a tremendous amount of money from you to initiate you um, to work with these beings or these guys. Well, here's the thing, guys, that, that I would say. I don't... I don't um, I don't come against initiations. If you want to be initiated into the system of Ifa or or Vodun or or anything, whatever, 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 anything you might want to be initiated into, that's your business and that's your right. But you have to question uh, anyone who again tells you that you need somebody between you and and your creator. You don't. And every time you look around, somebody is always trying to ease in that spot to be the mediator for you when the whole point of growth is to get this person out the way. So it's you and him or her, however you want to view it. You know, your divine parents don't need mediators. That's the whole thing that they want you to grow beyond is needing a mediator where you don't need a priest. You don't need a high priestess. You don't need a witch. You don't need a sorcerer. You don't need um, an elder, a minister, evangelist, pastor, preacher, teacher, none of it. Okay. Um, if you're not careful, they will make merchandise of you. So stay grounded. Use your common sense. If you pray and if you meditate, then you will be led to the right people at the right time. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't be prepared to pay for what you want because you should. Just don't let people make merchandise of you. If a person is approaching you to try to get something from you and giving you a price for it, that's a problem. Now, if you go in search of somebody and that's somebody you want to work with and they have a price set already to work with them, then it's your duty to come with whatever it is that's required to work with them. And I hope that makes sense. We're going to address this issue many, many more times um, and get deeper into it. And again, I encourage you guys to keep growing. Be careful. Use common sense. Don't let anybody make a fool out of you and you'll be fine. Go and have a blessed day.